Well, well, well. Welcome back to Spinner Rock, everybody. And I gotta say, have you guys seen what I'm looking at back here? Do you know what that means? That means Amazon has finally gotten their feet on prime ground. That's right, the boys, the biggest hit out right now on streaming. This is a, a property that Netflix should have gotten, but Garth Ennis, you know, who's the writer of this particular story, he was, I mean, he didn't stop him or anything like that, but I'm just saying, this is something that they should have picked up. But right now, The Boys is it. The Boys are back in town. This is a comic that was quiet, sleepy, that went through the motions, and what happened is it exploded. Because what do we have? We have tons of people out there who, after looking at Marvel films and looking at the Netflix show, they, there's a market. And it doesn't matter where they are, whether they're on Netflix, Marvel, or the new Marvel um, Disney Plus series, they're going to come out and watch this. And this story takes the whole comic book genre to another level. I mean, they've done it other times before. You've seen flashes of this in Umbrella Academy. You've seen some of these other things. But this is off the chain. I mean, it's just throwing me off. So we're just going to do the first episode because I feel bad doing it without my boys. You know what I'm trying to say? When I say get them in, we're going to do the whole thing, uh, a review of the whole season. But here, just to give you a backup, basically this is a world where superpowered individuals are um, marketed by a corporation, you know, and the top superpowered individuals are the seven, and they run and, and they are marketed by a company called Vought International. I know it doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, but Vault International, they have like 220 superheroes throughout the country or throughout the world who represent them. But the epitome of this, to make it to the top, is the seven. And then, of course, this is the Justice League. And this is not your old happy go lucky superhero. This is a world where the superheroes, yeah, they have a, the, the Vault has them, has them looking positive. They're selling merchandising because of them. They are, um, you know, they're selling, they, they, they're, they're using their theme parks and stuff because of the superheroes. So this is how these superheroes are making money and being kept under control by Vought. But they're vain. They're mean. They're disgusting. You know, they're sexist. They, they're, they're a rapist. They are everything criminal. They're murderers. They are just plain bad. You know, and so I know some people are going to hate it, like, oh, man, this is not real superhero shows. But you know what? This is just a fun shake. This is another take. We've grown from when, you know, when the comic code was, everybody had to be good and good. To now, you know, we, we are pushing the line. And, of course, we can see this with Batman. Batman pushed the line in the Dark Knight, and now all comics forever have been changed. You know, Frank Miller moved the, moved the pendulum. Yes, he moved it a little bit of Dark Knight, but now, God damn it, that sucker is out the, out the door. And today... This here is Amazon Prime. You know, who's been buying anything from Amazon Prime? Not I. I mean, well, I have the subscription, but nothing else, really. You know, most of their shows are subpar. They have been letting Marvel, not Marvel, they've been letting Netflix kick their butt from right to left, from beginning to end. And now, finally, you know, they're starting to get their act together. With this show, the upcoming Lord of the Rings show, they're putting their mouth, their, their money where their mouth is. So, hey, let's get into the show. So, this show, like I said, uh, there's a group of superpowered heroes, and there are two main protagonists. There's a group named Huey and um, Starlight. Starlight is a Midwestern girl, blonde, and she um, wants to become a superhero, and she has been admiring the Seven for all her life. And so now, you know, she's been going to auditions with her mother, and, you know, there's superpowered people living like anybody else. You know, and she's not rich, she's not well off, but, you know, she's been doing this as a kid all her life. And she is, she's been trying to, you know, gain. Everybody knows their superpowers. This is not like in the, the X-Men where the, they seem to be hiding their powers. No, they, they're fully fleshed out, practically registered. And so she gets an audition and she doesn't think she makes it. But not only does she make, get the audition and become, I guess, into Vought's superhero family, she goes all the way to the top. She makes it to the seven. Now, this girl is lovely. She wants to help. She wants to do what's right. She follows, she's been watching the posters. She's been looking at the TV shows. And these guys, she wants to be the nice, precious seven, the guys who do the right thing. But once they select her, she comes in. What do they do? They throw her into the claws of the deep. The deep. That's the Aquaman equivalent. And I don't want to use these words because, you know, Aquaman, Superman, Batman, you know, I don't want DC to come down on me and say, hey, this is not my type of show that we... Uh, follow because, you know, we're a wholesome family program. 
a wholesome family TV show, a wholesome family um, thing. But hey, the analogy is there, my friends. What can I say? What can I say? So they go out there, and she, um, he basically blackmails her, or basically blackmails her into um, performing sex with him, you know, if she wants to be part of the seven, something that she's always wanted to do. And he was her hero, man. He was her hero. And, you know, it's just, it's just plain horrible. Can't say it. On the other hand, we have Huey. He's like the most non-aggressive, violent dude in his life. He works in an electronics store. He's there just doing his thing. He's trying to ask his boss for a raise because his girlfriend has told him, and he just doesn't want to do it. He's just like, you know, so non-confrontational. His girlfriend says in the movie, hey, we wouldn't even be together if I didn't come talk to you because, you know, you were just not going to do it. So we're like, oh, man, this dude is like, you know, a loser. You know, you got to step up. But he lucked out, got a girl, lucked out, got a job. But, you know, he's there talking about moving in with his girlfriend. They're out on the sidewalk. And then A-Train, pow! A-Train, the speedster, going fast. He's moving so fast, he just literally rips through her. Yo, the scene is absolutely off the frigging chain disgusting. I didn't know what the hell I saw. Didn't understand what's going on. Suffice to say, she dies, and that changes the whole world for Huey, you know? Because later on, Vought comes to him and says, hey, we need you to sign a confidentiality agreement or a non-disclosure agreement, and we're going to give you 45000 You weren't married, so we're only going to give you $45,000 for the death of your girlfriend. But you must not divulge anything of how she died and the occurrences. And Huey is just totally disgusted by this whole thing. And of course, what ends up happening is that, you know, he's being watched by others. And this is where we go to the boys. You know, he gets inducted to the boys. One of their members comes, Butcher comes by, and basically recruits him and wants him to put in a bug in seven town, their headquarters and stuff like that. And he, of course, is like, hells to the no. They're going to kill me. You know, and, you know, can you prove, that he, he proves to him that A-Train was laughing at his girl and it was no big deal to these dudes and they treat humans, they treat regular people as, as, as peons and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, he's pissed off and it pumps him up and, you know, he goes to the park and, but he still doesn't want to do it. And so he goes to the park and who does he meet? Starlight. And Starlight, you know, after being used and abused by uh, the Deep and stuff like that, she basically, um, and he, they basically pump each other up because both their personalities are not very, you know, aggressive towards them. She wants to be nice. She wants to be, and at the same time, you know, he wants to do the right thing. But what is it? And so after talking to her, he goes back and he plants the damn, um, <laughs> he plants the damn, uh, bug. Of course, that's going to be with tragic consequences. And, of course, she goes back to the seven. So it is, uh, I got to say, a very interesting, interesting show. And probably one of the biggest things that you have Homelander, who is, I don't want to say, he is the leader of the group, and this dude is the biggest friggin' douche there ever was. So I got to say, get out there, watch the show. You know, I got to tell you, it's an adult show, so it's not something you should be like just watching around little children. But, you know, if you are a comic aficionado, if you're into superheroes and stuff, this is definitely another take on it. And this is a good take. This is not the, the, the take that I think that everybody should be constantly watching. Of course, the Marvel films are something that you can definitely get your hands on. The Netflix shows were a little bit darker and, and took a different twist, you know, more of an adult twist. And this just pushes it one step further. But it's entertaining so far. And I think I'm definitely going to be there for the next couple of shows. So if I was you, if you like what I said, Give me a thumbs up, comment. Hey, give me a thumbs down if you don't like it, or, but tell me why. Spinner Act.